This is the second part of the section entitled The Syllable. Here we are going to see uh, how to divide words into syllables here. The division between syllables called the syllable juncture. This is, the, I mean, the juncture represented in this case by this hyphen here. The word parade is, I mean, divided into per aid two syllables now consider these two words mistake mistime now here we have divided this word mistake into me stake because normally this sequence of sounds s and t is possible at the beginning of the english word stake here we have got miss time notice this aspirated t because it's uh, at the beginning it's the in, in the initial position here of the syllable miss time so this shows that in fact we have got different possibilities as far as the division of words into syllables is concerned so syllables can be defined both phonetically and phonologically you remember that we uh, presented two different theories trying to define and to show to us the nature of the syllable from a phonetic point of view uh, Stetson's theory and Jesperson's theory okay so syllables can be defined both phonetically and phonologically we are going to talk about this phonological, I mean, uh, if you like, uh, definition or point of view towards the syllable. First, syllables are usually described as consisting of a center which has little or no obstruction to airflow and which sounds comparatively loud. So, in each syllable, we should have a center, the most important element of it. And most of the time, this center is a vowel. Of course, you know from your phonetics course, vowels do not need any obstruction of the air. As opposed to consonants, where well, there is need for the obstruction of that air here. So, before and after this center, before the vowel and after the vowel, there will be greater obstruction to airflow and or less loud sound so because i mean before the vowel there is a consonant after the vowel there may be a consonant and we have just said that consonants need the obstruction of the air here i mean you know because when we compare consonants and vowels we find that vowels have no obstruction of the air but we when we talk about consonants we can't talk about th uh, the interference with the air stream that produces them now let's look at these examples here we have got ah oh, this is just one syllable it contains only one vowel ah oh. and here's the same thing or oh. But in here we have got the vowel preceded by a consonant m more. Now same thing in here key, a consonant which needs obstruction of the air, which is uh, not as loud as the vowel in here. So e is the center, is the vowel here. Now o, same thing here, a vowel followed by consonant e, same thing. Now, in here, it's somewhat different. We have got the center, which is A, preceded by a consonant and followed by a consonant. Same thing in here, the center A, preceded by F, followed by L. What does, I mean, this show? What can we say through these examples? The main bit, the main element of the syllable is a vowel. Which means that whether we have a got consonant before and after, whether we whether they whether they exist or not, this does not matter. So which means they are optional. 
but what is compulsory in syllables is the vowel here so there should be a vowel I mean in the structure of the syllable now let's look at some further notions here now but we have got some problems in some cases where we have uh, vowels following each other here we have got a problem where shall we draw I mean the the boundary between the first and the second syllable look for most native speakers this word contains two syllables but where is the division to be set between the two syllables this O here where does it belong and let's try to answer this question here we know O is part of the diphthong O in English the O is part of the phonemic inventory of the English language but this is a fact of phonology so here we are trying to explain uh, I mean the nature of the syllable from the phonological point of view here so the fact that we say O belongs to O because O is one of the phonemes of English this is you know the uh, the answer that we obtain from phonology not phonetics this is not due to the phonetic structure of the cell and let I me mean, just consider this example that we uh, we talked about before extra how can we divide it here of course we will try to come back to it later on now this way of looking at syllables is not very useful I mean if you like you remember the first two theories Stetson's theory and yes person's theory which means the phonetic way of uh, explaining the notion of the syllable that way okay of looking at syllables is not very useful so which means that we are going to look at the syllable from the phonological point of view looking at syllables from the phonological point of view is better this involves looking at the possible combinations of English phonemes so we have to see uh, the possible sequences of phonemes and to make them different from the impossible sequences in English words and we have to I mean to talk about these two different ideas here what can occur in initial position of words and therefore initial position of syllables and how uh, a word ends we are going to see examples to explain what we have got in both A and B in here look among uh, uh, if you like the kind of if you like rules or limitations imposed on the distribution of sounds we can say that if the first syllable of a word begins with a vowel any vowel may occur though U is very rare this is if you like limitation or restriction number one let me just repeat it if the first syllable of a word begins with a vowel any vowel may occur though U is very rare which means that this U is rare you know in the initial position of words so which means that this in this phonetic environment we cannot have this u here now if the syllable begins with one consonant that consonant may be anything except n which means that it's impossible to uh, begin english words B we don't with this sound n here this vila nasal uh, j follows the same restriction except that it in some rare cases like you know borrowed words from French it can be used initially for example genre here so here what are we doing we are talking about some restrictions imposed on the distribution of sounds and at the same time we have to talk about sequential constraints 
What do we mean by sequential constraints? Here it means that we cannot put sounds or phonemes together in any way we like, but we have got some limitations, some constraints imposed on the order of the phonemes. For example, here, an initial sequence of two stops in English words, I mean, is uh, here is not possible. which means it is impossible to begin English words by two stops. For example, we cannot say kb or gd or tk. So a sequence of sounds of two stops in the initial position of English words, this is not possible. Once again, let's look at, I mean, look at this example here. Zdrim. This sequence of sounds here is not possible in English words. But st -r is possible. Stream. This is possible. So what are, what are we looking at? We are looking at sequential constraints. Okay? These sequential constraints can help us understand many things about uh, how native speakers deal with with the words from other languages. Let's talk about these examples. Ngogi, Nkomo. For native speakers of English, these two words begin with ng. We have just said that ng cannot begin English words. If you ask native speakers to pronounce these two words, they are going to insert a, a schwa, a vowel, before ng. They are going to pronounce it as ngogi or ngkoma. Just because there is a, what you call a limitation, a restriction on the distribution of ng in English. It can never begin words. So to make it, if you like, somewhat similar to the restrictions, to the constraints, of the English language, I mean, there is going to be a certain vowel put before ng here, and therefore this word is going to be pronounced as ngogi and ngkoma. This is what's going to be done by native speakers of English. Now, for Spanish speakers, the word school is not, I mean, going to be pronounced in this way. They are going to insert a certain schwa or a certain vowel, or a, it's going to be pronounced as esequila. Why do Spanish speakers pronounce school as esequila? Because in, in Spanish, no word begins with an initial s. Here, s. Now, Medina, le Medina, you know, for French people, it is pronounced as Medina. Because in uh, French here, no word begins with m de this sequence is not possible uh, notice even you know in moroccan arabic we can even begin by l m and d limdina this is impossible in french so for french speakers they are going to break this m and d by a certain vowel they say me a medina here same thing in german we have got knabe here for english speakers this this word since there is no sequence of k n as an initial sequence in English words, this sequence of sounds is going to be, uh, if you like, broken by means of uh, uh, vowel. The the uh, schwa is going to be inserted between k and n, kanabe here. Now for Japanese, club and school is going to pr pr pronounce as kurabu. School is going to be pronounced as sukuru. Why? Because in Japanese, the only stress, I mean, the flag pattern of the syllable takes C, V, consonant, vowel, consonant, vowel, consonant, vowel. This is how Japanese works. So, look here, in, 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 in English, we have got K, L, and vowel. Consonant, consonant, vowel. But, 
uh, in the um, in, uh, Japanese this consonant and consonant is going to be broken by a vowel here it becomes kurabu of course you know L will become R in Japanese just because I mean this uh, I mean L has got as a realization uh, R and uh, let me just remind you of the uh, uh, exercise that you had in your S4 concerning you know the you know the Korean language okay where L is pronounced as R so Kurabu club Kurabu I mean this sequence of sounds okay is broken by means of the, the vowel between them here school sukuru to make it if you like more like uh, uh, the sound pattern of Japanese here because in Japanese we have syllables taking this shape consonant vowel consonant vowel now here we have got double consonants and vowel so to make it conform to the pattern of the syllable in Japanese we have to break this k, the sequence of s and k you know we have to put something in between this is the o here sukuru okay let me repeat for Japanese club and school will be pronounced as kurabu and sukuru respectively what does this mean each individual tries to make foreign words conform to the phonological rules of his native language this is because each language has got its own sound pattern ideally the same sequential constraints which operate at the beginning of a word should be operative at the beginning of a syllable the rules which govern the beginning of words also govern the beginning of syllables similarly the same sequential constraints which operate at the end of a word should be operative at the end of syllables so remember this fact here so words can be syllabified on the basis of the phonotactic sequential constraints of a given language so uh, those rules which govern the order of phonemes in uh, syllables and in words okay so they can help us syllabify words they can help us know how to divide words inter into their syllables now recognizing a parallel between word structure and syllable structure Paul Graham, this is another linguist proposes three principles to determine the syllabification of pro problematic cases and we are going to see uh, you know later in another part these I mean uh, principles that I mean this you know uh, linguist program proposes so we are going to see them later on so this is the end of part two you know in the section entitled the syllable